us to order at 7.02 p.m. for this November 27th regular East Lansing Board of Education meeting. Uh, Ms. Hoko, would you help us with a roll call vote, please? Dr. Chambers. Present. Dr. Lyons. Here. Ms. Ferris Highland. Here. Dr. Edsel. Here. Mr. Holbrook. Here. Mr. Martin. Here. Dr. Torres. Here. Student Representative Helen Walsh. And in place of Ms. Laco, Mr. Mitchum. Present. Awesome. Uh, Secretary Ferris Highland, would you read our mission statement? Please. The mission statement is nurturing each child, educating all students, and building world citizens. Excellent. Next on the agenda, agenda is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Move the Board of Education approve the agenda for November 27th, 2023 as presented. Second. That was moved by Trustee Lyons, VP Lyons, seconded by a Trustee Holbrook, I think. Can I was amend the agenda to remove item 6B? Oh. Oh, right, okay. Uh, Trustee Lyons, would you consider that a friendly amendment? Excellent. And all in favor of the revised agenda, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. We'll move to approval of the minutes. Is there a motion? I move we approve the minutes for the uh, November 13th Board of Education meeting as presented. Second. It was moved by Trustee Holbrook, seconded by Secretary Ferris Highland. Um, all in favor of the approval of the minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Abstain. I wasn't here. Excellent. Um, minutes. Excellent that I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, okay, before we move to recognition, now that we have sort of the procedural things out of the way, you may have noticed that Superintendent Laco looks a little different this evening. We um, are in the capable hands of Assistant Superintendent uh, Glenn Mitchum. We appreciate you stepping in. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here. Excellent. Um, okay, then we will move to recognition. I have none tonight, but I'm hoping our student rep has some. But um, I encourage anyone to send me recognition if you have it, because I miss it. There's a lot going on across all of the buildings, and while we yeah. represent most of the all of the schools, I think most of the schools, maybe not all of the elementaries, um, we still don't know everything that's going on. So feel free Send to help my us way. out if there's something we need to toot toot about. We will. Be yes, happy please. To do it. Other items of recognition from other members of the board or from Assistant Superintendent Mitchum. Excuse me. Then let's, yes. Holland, would you please step to the podium and we will move to the student representative report. So I do have some recognition Excellent. today. Excellent. I knew we could count um, on yes. Starting off with clubs, Science Olympiad had a tournament in Troy this recently and placed fourth. Mata UN has a conference in Lansing this weekend. Theater just finished the play Noises Off, which grossed $3,600. And then for sports, Fall season ended, so the winter sports are starting, which means bowling, girls and boys basketball, boys swim and dive, wrestling, and our co-op gymnastics and hockey teams will be starting their season. And then last, we have our student council updates. So we recently did kindness grams, which is when students can write letters to their friends or teachers free of charge, and we'll deliver them to their first hours. Um, we're scheduling the multicultural assembly for January. And we are working with Ms. Sink to plan student section shirts for the upcoming basketball season. And that's all I have. Awesome. Thanks, Holland. Are there questions for Holland from the board? And football finished? Yes. They, they, they're, they're they were in the final <laughs> four. <laughs> they finished final either four. third or fourth, however you look at it. Yeah. They lost to the eventual state champions, Muskegon, oh, in the semifinal. Great run. Great run. It was a great run. Okay, well then, thanks, Helen. We will move to the superintendent's report, which will be delivered by Assistant Superintendent Mitchell. Okay. All right, thank you. I'm here in place of Ms. Laco, who's unfortunately uh, ill, but she's made it clear to me that uh, she is uh, watching the feed. So oh boy. I reserve the right to retract and restate <laughs> anything, depending on any text messages I, I get. Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, holiday winter break giving opportunity. I want to talk a little bit about that. Last year, ELPS 
was able, able to provide over $4,000 directly to our families through donations from community members. And we'd like to offer this support to our ELPS families once again this season. Every dollar collected is redistributed directly to ELPS families. To make a donation via Venmo, please use the address dory laco To make a donation via check, please write a check to East Lansing Public Schools and send to the address uh, below, which is 501 Bertram Drive, uh, East Lansing, Michigan, 48823. And that's, uh, you can address it to ELPS support care of superintendent's office. Uh, donations will need to be received by the end of the day, December 13th, so we have time to distribute the funds to families before break. Also want to say thank you to the Qantas Club of East Lansing. The Qantas Club of East Lansing will be providing its first book vending machine to ELPS after the start of the new year. Historically, the Qantas Club has provided dictionaries to all third grade students and thesauri to middle school students as students are more likely to use online sources as a replacement for paper dictionaries or thesauri, their support of literacy will shift toward providing book machines in our school buildings. These vending machines cost approximately $7,000 each, with the books being an additional cost. This project will be ongoing as funds are raised, and the tokens for books will also support our PBIS initiatives at our buildings, Many thanks to the Qantas Club of East Lansing. We will update you uh, when our first machine is in place. Um, I will say our first machine is planned to go to Donley. And if you haven't seen or know much about book vending machines, they're, they're phenomenal. Um, I encourage everybody to Google book vending machines and just watch the videos of kids getting these books there. So the, the book, the, the machines look just like real vending machines. They're there's uh, uh, books inside, of course, and then um, we have tokens to give to kids for various reasons. They put the token in the machine, they get the book, and they keep it. They take it home, and it's um, these videos. You know, you think like, oh, yeah, they, you know, the kid gets a book, great, but it's like the biggest deal in the world, and it's super exciting. So, Donnelly's getting the first one. We're hoping to engage um, our school PTA groups to. Um, help with the funding to, to restock the machines as they come in. And we're, uh, we're kind of working in conjunction with the Kiwanis Club to fundraise for these machines. So first one in January, and the hope is that all six of our elementary schools will eventually have uh, a vending machine. So we're excited about that. Um, at-home COVID tests are available. Each building has at-home COVID-19 tests available. Please contact your school office if you'd like to pick some up or have them sent home with your student. And then the last item, uh, I won't read this, but there, um, these bulletins, remember, go out uh, tomorrow morning, the following morning of each board meeting. And again, the snow day decisions and communication um, information that Ms. Laco read last board meeting is, is uh, reprinted again in case uh, folks didn't get a chance to get that. So you can look uh, for that, uh, that e-blast that will come out in the morning. It gives all the details of our closing procedures. It is actually snowing outside right now, so time to be ready for that. That's all I had. Excellent. Are there questions for Assistant Superintendent Mitchum from the board? I feel like I can hear Superintendent Laco saying, follow her on Twitter if you want to be the first to know about a school closing, <laughs> and you can do that at, at ELPSSUP, E-L-P-S-S-U-P-T, <coughs> for those of you who have a Twitter account. Excellent. Okay, well, then we will move on to uh, presentation. Obviously, the planned presentation about ELPS district goals. Public comment. Public comment. <laughs> right there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I got a little excited about this. Presentation. Not that I'm excited. Not excited about public comment. I know we have a couple of forms. So while Ms. Hilcor is bringing these up, I'll just say for those who are not familiar with our process, we have these blue forms in the back and the little tray. If you have public comment to offer, um, go ahead, fill this out and hand it to her or send it her way, and she'll get it to me. Uh, and I'll read our statement. 
This is the opportunity to address the board. Speakers are to confine their remarks to five minutes. If a speaker requires more than five minutes, after all other persons who have requested to speak during this part of the meeting have spoken, that speaker will be allowed additional time. The superintendent or other district staff may comment to clear up or avoid significant misunderstandings. Okay, first form I have is Kyle Enger about school start times. Thank you. Um, I'd like to I'd like to read a very brief article from the Economist, uh, September sixteenth, twenty twenty three. Uh, the title is Raising the Alarm Clock. The subtitle is America's Schools Start Too Early. That is at last beginning to change. <clears throat> the back to school season can be hard, not least in Syracuse, New York. On September 6th and 7th, high school students there returned to classrooms at 7.25 a.m., 25 minutes earlier than the year before. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, most American public schools start a little after 8 a.m. More than a quarter start even earlier. Students in the South are the earliest risers. In Louisiana, instruction typically begins at 7.45 a.m. Such schedules, health experts say, are inappropriate for teenagers whose internal clocks are wired for an 11 p.m. bedtime and an 8 a.m. wake up. In 2014, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommended that middle and high schools start no earlier than 8.30 a.m. The Centers for Disease Control has concluded that of all the policies aimed at boosting adolescent sleep, delaying school start times could have the greatest impact. Data from the annual American Time Use Survey show that between 2003 and 2022, high school students who started class after 8.30 a.m logged 33 more minutes of sleep on average than those who started sooner. A recent paper by Kevin Bastian and Sarah Fuller of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill finds that later start times lead to better attendance, fewer disciplinary problems, and higher test scores. Some policymakers are getting the message. The National Center for Education Statistics latest data show that the share of American public schools starting after 8.30 a.m. rose in the 2020-2021 school year. In 2019, California passed a law requiring public middle schools to start no earlier than 8 a.m. and high schools uh, start no earlier than 8 a.m. and high schools no earlier than 8.30 a.m. In May, Florida passed a similar law. Eight other states are mulling such laws. A bill in the New York State Assembly would require public schools to start no earlier than 8.30 a.m. Relief may be on the way for Syracuse's sleepy teens. Um, I think that makes the case probably better than I could have. I don't, I don't want to minimize the, the challenges involved with changing school start times. You know, there are issues with um, after school activities and busing and you know, older students taking care of younger siblings and things like that. But I really think this is something we need to look at and start planning for. Um, and that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Anger. Right, thanks, Kyle. Uh, next we have Brandy Branson, uh, high school comments. I guess I could have made the comments um, across the board. Um, I am Brandy Branson. I am representing LPAT. I um, just wanted to let you all know on the positive feedback that we're getting in our meetings just from the energy change in the board meetings um, that you guys are really doing um, a much better job at communicating as a district. Sitting in the board meetings, you feel like you can just feel the energy shift. So I want to make sure that we acknowledge that. And it's the high school, um, definitely energy shift here as well. Uh, students, I, I'm not hearing much of anything going on as far as the students being negatively impacted. But the Trojan True postcards, it was interesting um, to hear the kids talking back and forth um, around my house about who got a Trojan True card and who does not. So there are some positive things happening in East Lansing compared to where we were nine, well, 10 months ago. So great job, keep up the good work. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, I don't have any other comment forms. 
I don't see anybody scrambling to turn one in. So I'm gonna close public comment. Thank you, everybody. And we will now move to the presentation that I'm so excited about. Um, as I was saying, we'll just push that ELPS district goals presentation to probably the next meeting. Um, but I'm really excited to have our newest principal with us, Molly Williams, the new principal at White Hills Elementary, if you wanna come to the podium. Um, and let me channel Superintendent Laco to say, we've given wide sort of direction about where these presentations can go from providing kind of a broad overview to really highlighting something cool that's happening in a particular school to spend more time doing that. So um, we're, we're giving a lot of um, flexibility to superintendents to share what they would really like to share with us about what's going on in their school building. So Ms. Williams, thank you so much for being here and I'll give it to you. Thank you for having me. Amy Holbrook, who is a member of our social justice team, um, and that's kind of the focus of what we're talking about here, um, joins me as well. Um, November for us was community month. Um, all the activities here pl were planned by our social justice team, and I'd just like to acknowledge our members, although they're not all here tonight. Um, they put a lot of work into the activities for this month and the ongoing activities that will stem from this. Um, so Michelle Hassler is a member, Marie Voloshek is a member, Lisa Armstrong, um, Alicia Little, Nicole Spear, and Amy Holbrook. Um, so we'll be um, co-presenting today um, on the different activities that have taken place through the month of November. But before we do that, I just want to acknowledge, based on the positivity that preceded me here, um, as a new principal, <coughs> I'm constantly impressed with the things we have going on in East Lansing. And this was, as I was new into the job, one of the wonderful surprises that I had. Um, and just the amount of work and time they put into the work was incredible. Um, so the, the um, for Community Month, um, Amy's going to explain this to you in a sec here, but our theme through the Community Month was anti-bullying and then bullying prevention is how this threads through. Hi there. <clears throat> um, so I wanted to start by saying that Alicia Little is our... Um, our fearless leader of our social justice team. Uh, she re represents uh, White Hills at the district level. Um, and uh, we decided, st starting I think it was last year, we started doing a community book um, where all of us in the building read a book and then we create some sort of community art based on the book. And we found that it um, facilitates common language and common communication um, as well as um, sharing community and each other's differences and um, similarities. So this year for Community Month of November, we decided to choose the Together Tree by Aisha Saeed. She also wrote, um, she's a children's author. She's written um, some junior novels like Diana, which was based on like Wonder Woman stories. Um, she is uh, Arab American and She's also written Amal Unbound, which is another novel that many of us have in our classroom libraries. Um, <coughs> this one, The Together Tree, is a picture book, and she wrote it based on her son's experiences and that he had experienced moving to a new school, and she was surprised to find that some people were pretty unkind. Um, and so this story is about uh, Rumi, who is a young boy who has moved to a new school, and um, some children are picking on him about his very colorful artsy shoes mm -hmm. and he ends up finding a willow tree that he kind of doodles underneath by himself during recess and um, he kind of builds his own drawings and and safe space under the willow tree and one day he's made fun of again and targeted um, with unkindness that causes harm and one of his classmates finally steps up and befriends him and checks in with him. And it becomes like a community of friendship under the willow tree, it becomes the together tree. Um, and the book does a nice job of focusing on being an upstander and taking a moment to notice not just differences but similarities and things that you could have in common and caring for each other. We also had some subtext, sub videos that were used 
And one of the subtexts that was used um, primarily with our K2 children was the book One by Catherine Atashi. Um, in this book, the main character is blue. And blue is kind of a roll with it, easygoing color. Um, pretty happy with himself. Sometimes he's like, well, I wish I was a little bit more cheerful, like yellow, or I wish I was a little bit more vibrant, like green. But he's pretty happy with who he is. But then there is red, and red picks on blue incessantly. And the other colors don't agree with it, but no one's willing to stand up to him. And eventually, the number one comes along. And the number one has a different perspective. And the first time red tries to, to pull this, I'm going to bully you, I'm going to pick on you, the number one just, no, I'm not going to do it. And so they show red as this big, round image. And as the other numbers start to stand up for themselves and stand up for one another, they grow taller, just as we see in our posture with our kids when they're self-confident and they have support. Um, and in the end, it all comes back around where they form these friendships. But the big takeaway from this is with our kids, we talked about, am I jumping ahead? I think I'm That's jumping okay. ahead. <laughs> How can you be the one? So be the one to be kind. Be the one to invite another child to play with you. And when we get further into the slide deck, you'll see some imagery of how we address that. But it really put into terms for our students of how everyday things they can do can make a huge difference in other students' lives. And also how to empower themselves. Um, so obviously if bullying is taking place, we want to start a process to, to end that, not allow it. But we also want to be very preventative and give students strategies so we don't get to those places all. Um, at the upper level, so I teach fourth grade, so the third, fourth, fifth grade level, we used the um, companion text of a video called Are You Okay? It's a short film, um, has more of like a maybe middle school, high school kind of feel to it, um, but as a fourth grade teacher, I have observed and helped students navigate social media and the um, digital platform and how it can affect relationships as well. And so this video was a helpful companion text, so to speak, um, media. And what it's about is Raquel and Noah are two characters in there. And um, Raquel observes Noah being treated pretty unkindly, sees that people are taking pictures and videos. Um, and uh, the artist does a nice job of adding like this purple goo to them to kind of carry that stickiness, that heaviness that a person might feel with the unkindness. Um, and it follows them home because it is happening through digital ways as well, the unkindnesses. And Raquel finally um, asks him, like, are you OK? And she's experienced some of these unkindnesses also because she stood up and reported him. But somebody, um, some of the other kids were starting to then um, share that she was a rat or that she was a snitch. And that was weighing heavily on her as well. Um, but it does a really nice job of highlighting at the end that simply asking, are you OK, simply being the one person to, to check in can make a difference in how somebody feels and how connected they can feel to others. So then it brings us <coughs> to our together tree. At the end of the together tree book, um, the kids are hanging out under the willow tree. And um, Alicia Little, along with, I think it was Lisa Armstrong, correct? Yeah, painted this beautiful tree for us on our steam room. And as we're talking about seeing things in different ways, how do we handle things in different ways? Um, it was amazing as the kids were walking by and Alicia's painting this. Did you know Miss Little was an artist? And <laughs> so it, it, it was an unexpected kind of takeaway as we look at things in new ways. And then all the leaves on here um, decorate or represent every student has a leaf, every staff member, whether you're a teacher, or a paraprofessional, you work in the office, our MSU students who are sophomores, juniors, and seniors are represented, custodial staff, even Frodo is represented <laughs> on here cool. as our whole school community that we are one. 
Um, and the, the kids have just, every time they go by, they're, oh, I found your name, and it's creating conversation. Um, so I have a feeling the tree is going to evolve for our seasons as we're nearing the end of fall. So after reading the Together Tree, um, the classrooms, so the, the social justice team puts together some what we've called toe and knee and deep dive conversations that teachers can have within their classroom based on the text. Um, some of the activities that were offered for teachers to engage in with their classrooms would be to compare and contrast the text or the video. Um, to be a part of um, the whole building is a part of the BA1 mural. So each student was given a number one that you'll be able to see up close later in a slide um, where they chose to be the one. How are they going to be the one? I can be the one by. Um, it's a nice uh, way to provide variety in students' ability to respond because there can be a sentence starter. They could just draw on it. They can write on it. They can simply color it based on their abilities. And then also engaging in um, creating some anti-bully posters mm -hmm. or being an upstander kind of posters. And then this is just three of the examples of student work. Um, so be the one to ask questions like, are you OK? Do you need help? Or um, be the one to brighten someone's day by giving someone a compliment when they're feeling down. Be a friend. Um, there's a huge variety. These just seem to contrast a little bit with each other, so you can see some examples. If you are in the building, though, um, you can lose yourself pretty quickly starting to read all the different things mm -hmm. that students have thoughts on. This is the big picture of it right here. They were paper, giant paper letters that the social justice team had created of the O, N, and E, and then the students were filling in those letters. Uh, I think we underestimated the size <laughs> that we needed. <laughs> so our E kind of filled in a little extra. But The neat thing about this is it went up late October, the one. Mm -hmm. um, kids, what is that? Why is that there? Mm -hmm. And so it created some anticipation to what was to come. I, I don't know if that was the intent, no, but it certainly so. created yeah. the conversation for it. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wanted to take um, an opportunity to thank our social justice team, our board, and of course our administrators at Central Office for always supporting our kids' efforts. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, are you, could we, you want to take some questions maybe? Oh, I'm so Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just anticipating my colleagues probably want to talk about some things. No, it's, I understand the need to want to run away. Um, <laughs> Other questions for Ms. Williams or Ms. Holbrook? Well, I will start by saying um, I actually really appreciate that last photo where the one disappears because we're all together, you know? Oh. I thought that was an intentional choice, right? Anyway. <laughs> um, I know we all want to feel like COVID is over. But we have these moments of reminders of like, oh, yeah, we used to have these presentations from the individual schools. And I'm so pleased to see that come back to our agenda and hear from the various individual schools. So thank you so much for um, taking the time to be here. How have the students responded to these at the classroom level? What, I mean, I obviously you shared the excitement. That they have. Level. Yep. At my classroom level, um, it's been a very positive experience. We did... I'm trying to think of the other books that we did. We did, was it Red, I think, also? Um, talking about labels and how people label us and how we label ourselves. And um, we talked about, what was one of the other ones? We did My Friend Simon, I believe it was called, mm -hmm. with autism focus. Um, this year it was, it was fun to do this one also. It, Within my classroom, I appreciate using authors that are different than myself, especially. Um, in this case, while I was trying to make sure that I said the author's name properly, mm -hmm. um, one of my students had spoken up and he was like, actually, can I fix that? And I was like, yes, please. Um, so it's a nice opportunity to talk about like the importance of names and cultures. And um, with the Together Tree, in my classroom, um, 
Mrs. Smalley, my, the other fourth grade teacher, and I, we open up the wall. Mm -hmm. That's been a really great opportunity with the new building. Um, she and I open the wall daily. And when we have a community read like this, or when we do our second step lessons, we do that all together. And so it provides more of that community opportunity and discussion and sharing of different experiences. Because um, often on the social justice team at White Hills, we work to try to choose a book that does bring community and um, diversity throughout so that we can kind of open up conversations. Yeah, and it seems like this um, topic would align nicely with the second step curriculum, that there are some nice it does. intertwinings. It does, yeah. yeah. Um, we don't start our, our um, bullying lessons from second step until later, but we've been talking about empathy and um, managing strong feelings, and so it provides an additional opportunity to discuss those pieces yeah. as well. That's great. Other questions? Sorry, I'm monopolizing all the time. <laughs> Trustee Torres. Hi. Um, this is great, and it's great to see like the ways you're integrating the arts into like the literacy. And uh, I'm I'm wondering how. So how do you select the books? What's the process to to come to the to come to the books? Okay, selection of the books. Um, we have used a couple of different ways of coming about that. One was through the district um, social justice team. Um, we have been provided with all sorts of lists of diverse books that we can draw from. Um, we tend to try to think of a theme that we want to go with. The beginning of the year, we like to have inclusion kind of themes. Um, we did use uh, Justice Sotomayor's last year, uh, Just Ask, I think it was, um, because that also provides a, a community, a getting to know each other kind of base. We like to use that for our fall idea. Um, when we chose the my pal or my friend Simon last year, um, we were looking at spring books. <coughs> we have a classroom for students with autism within our school, and recognizing a need to build more understanding and capacity for not just acceptance, but, or not just like tolerance or acceptance, but um, or or acknowledgement, but actual acceptance, being able to relate. Um, so having those conversations were really helpful. Thanks. I guess my, I, so how involved are the students in selecting the books? They are not yet. Okay. Is that something you're thinking about doing in the future? Um, it's a conversation that we've had. Uh, these are meetings that we typically have after school as the adults. Um, and at the elementary level, we would need to, uh, we need to have more discussion about how to involve students in, and in what capacity for the choices. I will just add the, the district list of DEI books that we provide, um, many of those had student voice input, not necessarily just from East Lansing, but mm -hmm. nationally. So they're, they're high interest books uh, according to students. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Uh, Ms. Williams said something that I thought was really uh, a great idea. It's not really a question, but um, you said that as the seasons change, you'd like to see the, the tree evolve. And I, th you know, I think that something that, that I've seen over the years is we have these great ideas that last for a few weeks or a month. And you know, their impact exists in that month, but you can make it so much bigger if you expand it out throughout the year or beyond and I think that's a really great idea so I'd encourage you to do that I appreciate that thank yeah. you yeah awesome well thank you again for taking the time to share with us these amazing things that are happening in your school we really appreciate the time thank you yeah. <clears throat> okay oh boy I lost my job um oh okay just to commit to your reports not yet Who's doing job? Oh, <laughs> one <laughs> more meeting. <laughs> Who's counting? Me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> committee reports. Academic tech. Um, we have not met since our last meeting, but our we have one on Friday at twelve o'clock. We do right here in this room. Mm -hmm. Be here. Be there. Be square. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Facilities. Uh, Secretary Bears Highland. We have not met, um, but we meet, I believe, on December eighth again. Okay, next, finance. We have not met. We meet Wednesday at 1230 in this room. 
sounds like fun times. Hmm. Uh, intergovernmental. Where? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> intergovernmental. I think that is. No meeting. Yeah. Uh, personnel, we have not met, um, but I'm starting to send the information around. Have already sent to the new board members about the required training um, for superintendent evaluation. Um, I think everybody else has conducted the, has completed the required training, but um, that's the only thing that comes to mind that's relevant for that committee. Uh, and then finally, po uh, per policy. Have not met. We will meet December 13th at noon. Awesome. Are there any announcements from board members or? Assistant Superintendent Mitchell. Okay, well, I hope everybody had a restful break. I know getting my kiddo in the bed last night was quite a challenge. <laughs> we persevered. Um, and then I'll call us adjourned at 7.37 p.m. Well done, team. Nice. Right. Thank you.